2D games and Unreal Engine seem like a bad match on first glance. But having dedicated over three and a half years of my life to mastering Paper 2D and Paper ZD, I can tell you that's actually not the case. It's a total fabrication. And in this video I'll give you an overview of the state of 2D game development with Unreal Engine 5 in 2025. I'll talk about amazing community projects, new plugins, new discoveries and workflow improvements and also what Epic Games has been doing to support Paper 2D creators over the last year. The first thing I want to highlight is a Pokemon fan game called Gamma Emerald by Andrium Panic. They created it using Unreal Engine 5 and Paper 2D and it really resonated with players hitting a milestone of over 200,000 downloads near the end of May. But it's also a great example for us developers of how awesome 2D 3D hybrids can look in Unreal Engine. And the developer also often shares behind the scenes information on their Twitter. For example, clips about how they created attack VFX with Niagara, math for catch rates and ball throw trajectory, using a software called Pixel Over to animate over 200 battle sprites mixing pixel art with a bone based approach and a lot more. On top of that, they're currently also working on making the codebase more modular to release a framework for people that also want to make Pokemon fan games with Unreal Engine 5, which we can probably all learn a lot from. But with fan projects like this, you never know when the plug gets pulled, so let's enjoy it while we can. And just a quick shout out to two other Unreal Engine Pokemon projects before we move on. Retro and Chill is also working on a framework to make Pokemon style games in Unreal, which is already available on GitHub in an early stage. And a YouTuber called Shemme released an awesome devlog of him remaking Pokemon Black and White in Unreal Engine 5 using Octopath Traveler's art style. Another fan game to keep an eye on is Mega Man The Rulers of Space, which is a 16-bit style retro action platformer using Unreal Engine 5. The project lead is Mark DeWiz, who you may know from creating Pocket Fighter EX and Unity, and also from his YouTube channel where he often livestreams his development process. Him and his team were able to solve a lot of hard problems to improve the 2D workflow in Unreal, such as palette swaps, layered sprites using the sequencer, importing tile maps from LDTK into Unreal, internally rendering it SNES resolution and then scaling it up to fit the screen, and many more. Next up I want to let you know about this 2D 3D hybrid top down template I recently made for Unreal Engine 5. You can simply add this to your templates folder to give you a perfect starting point for making 2D 3D hybrid top down games. It comes with gamepad support set up, an emissive texture for the character, a normal texture for edge lighting and multi-directional movement set up through Paper ZD. It's available to patrons of the pixelated python tier or higher, but for a limited time only it's also completely free from the link in the description. All I want in exchange is your email address so I can notify you when I release a new course or put out other Paper 2D related resources. Let's now get into a couple of new discoveries related to making Paper 2D games. The first thing is that we can actually force Unreal Engine to use the unlit view mode in packaged builds. Using an unlit mode to save on performance is a pretty common feature that some engines or frameworks offer, However, in Unreal it's only offered as a debug feature. Kula Jin on the Cobra Code community discord showed me a way to force it in packaged builds using just two lines of C++. And I added instructions to my 2D settings document if you're interested in trying it out. This leads to a roughly 10% increase in performance, making my demo run at 430 FPS on the Steam Deck and it also alleviates the need to go through all of the project and post process settings to get rid of tone mapping and other settings that mess up the colors. Another performance related tweak can be found in a great video by Wild Ox Studios. There has been a steep decline in performance when it comes to the default settings with Unreal Engine 5 and this video shows different settings we can play around with to get very close to UE4 performance, without having to lose out on much visual fidelity. Now I did already make a video prior on how we can improve performance for 2D games, but one thing he covers in his video which I didn't even consider is that we can switch the render hardware interface from DirectX 12 back to DirectX 11. In the case of my action platformer course project, doing this gave me roughly a 10% increase in performance on top of everything else. But there are also many cases where DirectX 12 is more performant. Simply said, it comes with a higher base cost than DX11, but using advanced features will result in less additional performance cost. And which RHI is better really depends on the specific use case. And for my beat em up prototype for example, using DX11 actually resulted in a roughly 10% performance loss in editor. So I think for flat 2D only projects, you probably will only have benefits by going back to DX11. But for 2D 3D hybrid projects, it seems to depend on the complexity of your game. One issue we had up until Unreal Engine 5.3 was that the tile map editor would often crash when closing the window. However, it seems this issue was fixed with Unreal Engine 5.4 and I haven't heard a single report of it crashing after that. So that's a great little quality of life update. While going through the old Paper 2D Trello task list, I also found a mention of Box2D, which is the open source 2D physics engine that Unity also uses, and it turns out it was implemented with Unreal Engine 4 in an experimental state before. Now for the majority of things you'd want to do with 2D physics, just using the built-in 3D physics and setting up an access constraint will be sufficient. 
However, for games that heavily focus on physics, just using a constraint on 3D physics is probably not enough. So having access to a dedicated 2D physics system would definitely be great. However, according to Michael Nolan, the former lead developer on Paper 2D, Box 2D was sadly removed with Unreal Engine 4.18. Since big changes were made to the entire physics system and it was easier to just scrap it because it was still an experimental feature. Let's talk a bit about what has been happening in terms of new free and paid plugins related to Paper 2D. At this point you probably all already know about the free Paper ZD plugin and how it improves sprite based workflows by introducing animation graphs and anima notifies. Even though there haven't been any new features added since my last state of 2D video, Heavy Bullets constantly maintains and updates the plugin when new Unreal versions come out, so first of all I just want to say thank you. And all of you watching right now can also show your appreciation by leaving a rating on the Paper ZD plugin fab page, since this is the best way to show the dev and also Epic Games how much we care about making 2D and 2D 3D hybrid games in Unreal. So please take these 10 seconds out of your day to do this right now. Moving on, Heavy Bullets is now mostly done contributing to the development of the Siege and the Sandfox and might be able to add a few more things to Paper ZD in the foreseeable future. The most requested feature right now is a way to create children of animation blueprints so we don't have to copy paste things around for every new character. But it's quite a tough one to program and we'll have to wait and see if and when this will be added. Joseph James aka Emery on Twitter was a technical artist at Quixel Epic Games in the past and is currently working on a lot of awesome quality of life features for paper 2D workflows. None of this is available to the public just yet but in his blog post you can learn a lot about his thought process and get a general idea of what problems these future plugins will solve. At first he messed around with a pixel art painter that would allow you to make changes to sprites right in the editor. And while this is a cool proof of concept, to really make it practical he would have to basically read feature parity with a sprite. Which probably isn't feasible and for now he decided to focus on other areas. His custom texture importer will automatically apply paper 2D settings to textures with certain prefixes and suffixes. And it also sets the filter to nearest instead of default from texture group making sure pixel art is also crisp in packaged builds. In a similar manner, he also implemented a tool that allows you to easily update the pivot setting without having to go into the sprite editor or use the bulk edit tool. And while this will only save you a few clicks, small workflow improvements like this do add up over time. The coolest thing though in my opinion is his silhouette masking on Y sorted sprites. In top down games, you'd want to allow your characters to walk behind objects to give a better feeling of depth. However, this will obscure the view to the character and having a silhouette like this can be super helpful. And again, none of this is publicly available yet, but definitely something to look forward to. Paper Exposed is a small plugin by Classy Ham, who's been a Cobra Code member for quite a while and often helps out people on the Discord as well, so thank you man. It basically exposes C++ Paper 2D classes to be extended in blueprints. You're probably only gonna need this for quite advanced use cases, but it's really cool to be able to customize these asset types through blueprints. A Sprite Importer is a paid, but quite cheap fab asset by ENFP Dev Studio. This also has been around for a hot minute, but I just recently had the chance to actually try it out. Aspread is one of, if not the best pixel art editor for PC, and even though the workflow of exporting to JSON and then using those files in Unreal is pretty smooth, getting a plugin like this which cuts the process down to even fewer steps is definitely worth it. Since you can read directly from an Aspread file, it allows you to instantly update things just by saving to your file and hitting re-import, allowing for even faster iteration speeds. Based on the tags you set in Aspread, it's also able to automatically generate your flipbook assets. And lastly I want to talk a bit about how Epic Games has been supporting Paper 2D projects recently. Showing Epic Games how many people care about Paper 2D has always been a big part of my mission. And it seems over the last year they finally took notice and multiple people at Epic reached out to me for a couple of projects. For Unreal Fest, Ari Armbrunson did an amazing presentation about myth busting Unreal Engine best practices. Which demystifies a lot of the Unreal Engine advice you hear again and again that might not even be true. It covers things like when you should use tick, blueprints versus C++, and also has a section about Paper 2D for which I was invited to submit a video to. And when Ari asked the crowd something, I was quite surprised with the result. How many say this is bust? You can definitely make 2D games in Unreal. Uh, okay, no one's gonna be called the coward this time. It seems that pretty much everybody in the room knew that you can make 2D games with Unreal Engine. And yeah, of course this is a crowd of experienced developers and things might look different if you asked in a room full of beginners or intermediate devs, but considering how niche and hidden Paper 2D was even a few years ago, this did catch me a bit off guard and was a very nice surprise. I was also contacted by someone at Epic last year to create a 2D 3D hybrid course for the ArtStation learning platform. This was again an amazing opportunity, allowing me to further spread the word about Paper 2D in a completely different community and hopefully show them what can be done with sprites in Unreal. To top things off, last month there was even a 2.5D course using Paper 2D released on the official Unreal Engine YouTube channel. 
I was not involved in this and was just as surprised as anybody else when this showed up in my subscription feed one morning. The course was created by Tiago Unreal who has a background in 3D modeling and virtual production and this course focuses on things that I usually don't cover in my videos. This includes the landscaping tools, how to create Niagara effects and sprite based foliage so I think you could all benefit from checking it out. I hope collaborations between Epic and the Paper 2D community like this will keep on happening and I think the next goal to push for now that we got a whole slew of new templates with Unreal Engine 5.6 would be to have an official Paper 2D template bundled with Unreal Engine again. I did try to reach out to Epic to let them know that I would gladly help with that but I think for anything to happen they need to see that all of you also want that to happen. So make sure to let them know in any way you can. And lastly, thanks to all of you for making cool stuff with Paper 2D, watching these videos, leaving comments, joining the Discord and so on because these are the actions that made all of this possible. And of course, also a huge thanks to my awesome patrons and YouTube channel members.